more of the Israeli perspective from someone who certainly has extensive experience uh, in dealing with several U.S. administrations. Joining us from now from Tel Aviv is Tsipi Livni, former Israeli foreign minister and former vice prime minister of Israel. And thanks for joining us, Tsipi. Well, what about that? We just heard from Terry McAuliffe close ally of Joe Biden, that for Israelis, those concerned about this changeover, they should be have, looking forward to a productive but frank relationship with the new administration. I was touched and moved yesterday uh, during the ceremony uh, as an Israeli and as a woman. And I'm looking forward because I believe that what Joe Biden represents uh, the same values that I believe in. Uh, and also when it comes to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, the idea of solving the conflict or anyway changing the GPS of the policy from uh, annexation uh, to two states for two peoples represent the interest of Israel. I do believe that there is a need to open a concrete, frank, uh, intimate discussion uh, about the Iranian issue, uh, not only with Israel, but with Israel and its neighbors. Right. Well, let's talk about, for starting with the Israeli-Palestinian issue, because the governments led by Benjamin Netanyahu, of course, uh, did have a sometimes uh, challenging relationship with the administration in which Joe Biden was vice president, sometimes specifically with him over, for example, the issue of uh, building in settlements or even in uh, Jerusalem. So how do you think uh, uh, this relationship will go specifically between Prime Minister Netanyahu and President Biden now moving forward? Uh, it's the responsibility of every Israeli prime minister uh, to keep good relations uh, between Israel and the President of the United States, any President of the United States. For many years, we used to keep these relations bipartisan. I worked as a foreign minister with uh, two different administrations, with uh, uh, the Bush administration, uh, Republican, and uh, with Obama's uh, administration, and all together, uh, even when we had some discussions and disputes, it was in a manner of respect, uh, both sides. Now, uh, it's clear that in Israel, uh, right-wing Israel, they were thinking in the last uh, part of uh, uh, Trump's uh, uh, administration that they can annex the territories. And this is something that would not happen, especially not uh, after uh, Biden entered into office. And the real question is, what does it mean when the U.S. administration would say that his vision is two states for two peoples? I don't think that uh, Israel and Palestinians would get now an invitation to another Camp David conference uh, to achieve eternal peace. But it is clear that when this is the goal, uh, Israel should avoid, and I'm sure that uh, we will be asked not to take steps that would be that would contradict this vision, including steps that are connected to an uh, annexation or uh, expand, uh, expanding uh, settlements. Uh, and Netanyahu would need to accept it because I believe that every Israeli citizen understands that the relations between Israel and the United States are of a strategic nature to the state of Israel. And what about the uh, Iran nuclear agreement? Do you think that uh, uh, Israel, Netanyahu government, or even maybe another government that comes after it is going to find common ground uh, with an administration that does seem determined to at least turn back the clock a bit and re-enter an agreement that many people here thought was inadequate? Well, uh, this is really tricky. Um, it's clear that Iran poses a threat not only to Israel, but to other parts of the region, including those states that now uh, just recently uh, we uh, formalized the uh, normalization with. Uh, and it's not only the nuclear aspiration, it is also about uh, the, the missiles program, about supporting terror, uh, either it's Hezbollah in Lebanon or in Yemen. And therefore, it needs to be addressed in a broader manner. Now, what happened is that uh, the former agreement was not embraced, to say, uh, 
uh, in an understatement, understatement by Israel, uh, basically not because of the idea that the world, the international community reached an agreement with Iran, but because of the sunset, uh, because of several articles within the agreement. But it was clear that the agreement postpones the uh, the plan, the program, the nuclear program of Iran. Now, what happened is that uh, Trump decided uh, to pull uh, the United States out of the agreement. And what we are facing now is that uh, Iran exploits this in order to, to promote and to uh, uh, enrich more and more. And this is something that is posing a, a, a bigger problem now. Right. So it is also clear that Trump wanted to negotiate another agreement with Iran. So I'm happy, uh, I was happy to hear that the Biden administration is not thinking about just, you know, rewinding the clock and or joining the agreement as it is. As, as is. And uh, as uh, Tony Blinken said uh, just two days ago, the idea is to have a discussion with Israel and with other states about what are the terms of the agreement, what should be done. I don't know whether they can reach, everybody can reach an understanding about it, but uh, I, I'm happy that uh, this kind of discussion uh, would, uh, right. I think it would start quite, uh, we don't have much time, so I think right. this is the first thing that needs to be done. Atsipi, if we could move to Israeli politics for a minute. Uh, no, the- we can't. <laughs> no, we can't. I'm sorry. You have no. You do, you don't want to. I'm not. I'm not speak, I'm not speaking about Israel politics. Uh, not in Hebrew, neither in nor in English. Okay, fair fair enough. Then I'll. I w- <laughs> fair enough. Then I will stay on on uh, uh, diplomacy. Uh, one of the things that the Biden administration but, has. But 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 talking about if if I may not personally, but. You know, people in Israel are looking at the United States, asking whether this is a good, uh, this is good. It was or it's going to be a, a, a president who is good for Israel or not. And I believe that it's time for Israel to decide what is good for Israel. Because uh, we need to decide. Those in Israel believing in annexation, they are taking Israel to one direction. Those of us believing in a Jewish democratic state, secure state, but also in the need to separate ourselves from the Palestinian in a peace uh, agreement, are thinking about completely different direction. And unfortunately, Israel in the last three rounds of elections and probably in the next round of election, this is not on the agenda. And I believe that it's time to put it on the agenda because it's important what the president of the United States believes in, but it is more important what we believe is the best, uh, what are the interests of the state of Israel, and what is the vision of the state of Israel. And unfortunately, this discussion is not being made in Israel. Well, let me ask you to tie these two parts of our discussion together. Do you think the change in administration in the United States a president who has been a believer in a two-state solution that may will maybe generate that kind of discussion in this election cycle. Uh, certainly, it is that is uh, one different. That is a different factor certainly than the previous three elections. Unfortunately, not because in the last three rounds of elections, center-left leaders used to say that uh, they don't want to speak about it because they want to tempt. Uh, right-wing voters to vote for them, but nobody came. Now what we are facing is uh, right-wing politicians, leaders, that are saying, okay, we have now a new administration, so annexation is off the table. Anyway, uh, we don't see a situation in which we will negotiate peace with the current also Palestinian uh, leadership. So let's put everything aside and let's speak about COVID and about uh, social issue. That this is important, but yet it's time, I believe, to to speak about this because, you know, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is quite a long distance for any American president when it is, uh, I think, most effective about our future. We live here with them. 
and it need to be addressed. But don't you think that may start to develop if, for example, we see, as we expect the Biden administration, for example, even just reestablishing ties and dialogue with the Palestinians, with the Palestinian Authority? Yes, this is something that surely would happen. What uh, Trump did, and I fully um, I congratulated and uh, uh, even uh, thankful or grateful for uh, the normalization uh, with the Arab states. But yet, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict was abandoned. And the Palestinians shut the door because every day they got another uh, decision uh, of whether it's an economic or political decision that uh, make it impossible for them, and they close, shut the door. Now I'm sure that the new administration would reach uh, out and uh, the message coming from right. the Palestinian Authority is, okay, new administration, we open the door. All right. Well, what we'll have to come next? Too early to say. Too early to say. Uh, Tzipi Livni, thank you for joining.